these teachers that are supposed to be teaching children first don't really seem to be very interested in that. And so I, I pulled a few statistics about what's actually going on with the education system nowadays. Now, this is according to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, uh, and this is from this past October, just 37% of 12th graders um, are basically math and reading proficient enough uh, to be prepared for the college courses. And your, uh, your article talked about North Carolina. In North Carolina, just 14% of eighth graders in public schools were proficient in reading. This is also from the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Um, so what's going on right here is we have a lot of activist teachers um, that are bringing critical race theory claptrap into the schools and they're not doing their jobs, which is to educate these children first. And as somebody that went to a public school, as somebody that is a, a fierce advocate for school choice, it makes me feel very concerned for the direction that this is all going in because not only are these kids not being educated, they're also being indoctrinated into critical race theory and into um, hating white people, into thinking that racism is the biggest issue that they're gonna face in society. And I really fear that this is going to have a detrimental effect on how these kids can operate in the world, you know, post, uh, post high school. Well, it already has. Um, you know, as a former high school teacher, I know you have to motivate children to learn. They're not going to just come in and go, oh, I want to know all about history and geography and civics and uh, accounting. Uh, they don't do that. You have to motivate them to learn. So now what these woke teachers are doing is giving children an excuse to fail. Oh, it's rigged mm -hmm. against me. The white people have everything. I'm not white, so therefore I can't succeed no matter what I do. It's a built-in failure. It's a victimization. So the public school system in America is basically creating uh, a victim class um, that when they don't do well, for whatever reason, they go, oh, no, 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 it's not my fault. I didn't study or turn in my homework. It's because the white people are oppressing me. And that is a real danger. Yeah, absolutely, Bill. And you know what? Uh, it, it's really good that you brought that up because when you even look at what's going on in, in the New York City public school system, now there's all this conversation about, well, just fundamentally math, that math is racist. Um, there's uh, all this conversation about tweaking the standards for certain standardized tests because African-American students are, are scoring lower. So that must be because, you know, learning that is now racist and, and all of this stuff has something to do with racism. Um, I, I think that it just is, like I said, it's very detrimental. It's not helping these African-American kids. And what we like to call it is this is the soft bigotry of low expectations. And I have to point out the fact that these are mostly white liberals that are doing this, right? So, so these are not evil uh, conservatives. But or there's anything no like pushback. Um, there's not much pushback from the African American community. See, that's where I say you have to start. So, if the African American community would rise up against this phony public school point of view and say, "No, we want." the basic academics taught on a level to everybody, this would stop. It's the same thing in Chicago. If the people in the poor neighborhoods where hundreds and thousands of people are being shot would go out and demonstrate like they did after the shooting in Minneapolis, if they would do that, mm -hmm. then maybe something would happen. Now, I have a personal question for you. How yes. did you avoid when you were a kid being put into that victim category? Well, I mean, honestly, to tell you the truth, you know, I, I went to failing public schools as well. And, and it was a different era, you know, when I, when I was growing up. I had good teachers that, that motivated me. But also, like I said, I, I think that the biggest motivator in my life um, was the discipline that I got from being in the military. You know, like I said, I talk about it uh, in, in Always a Soldier right there. And I think that that is the key. And I think that for a lot of these kids, um, you're absolutely right that there are more parents that need to be involved and there are more people that need to be speaking up. But you have to understand also that in these failing public school systems, and I always think back to New York City because that's where I lived for 12 years. And, you know, you see these kids on the subways, you see these kids on the streets every single day after school. These, these uh, schools are operating as little more than glorified babysitters for these kids who aren't really learning much. And the only thing that is the difference between the kids who are not learning and the kids who are learning and don't go through life with that mentality 
is at least one active involved parent, preferably two. Um, and I think that in, when I look back to my life, uh, I grew up in a single parent household, but my mother was very, it was actively involved in my life. She always pushed forward that education is important. And I think that that's another element uh, that, that we're not really seeing here. Sure, with a lot parental, of these parents getting involved. The parents have more to do with education than any teacher will ever have. Yeah. <clears throat> Final question for you, Rob. Um, there is a tremendous amount of bitterness within the African-American community, generally speaking, toward the American system. Now, I don't know what the percentage is, but I see the polling and I hear people like LeBron James and the professional athletes that so many children look up to bad mouth in their country all day long, kneeling, not respecting uh, the structure and the traditions of America. That's reality. So the combination of poor teaching, creating a victim mentality among students who need to be motivated, not told they're victims, and what mm -hmm. these kids see um, among the athletes and movie stars and things like that, the rappers, um, it's over, almost overwhelming for an African-American kid, is it not? You know, it's very overwhelming. I think that there is a lot of sense among black people in this country right now. And, and like you said, this is aided by media propaganda, by entertainers, by celebrities, by athletes, rappers, whatever. So there is a sense that the American dream is somehow not available to African-Americans. And the hypocrisy of this is actually crazy because you would hear somebody like LeBron James pushing out this messaging, but LeBron James has become fabulously wealthy because he has a skill and a talent, and he was able to do that via the American system and via capitalism. And that's the, the thing and the hypocrisy that nobody seems to point out. I think that in order to let uh, Black Americans, but, but any other quote-unquote marginalized Americans realize that the American dream is for them as well, we just need to start speaking up about it. There need to be more voices like mine. I think uh, more voices, particularly on our side of the aisle, um, from people that don't come from the typical background, but learn that conservative values actually do work, learn that loving America actually does work, and learn that the American dream and capitalism and all of that stuff really is for Black people too. We need to start getting that messaging out there a little bit more. And I think that this is, you know, this is a good, uh, yeah, good way but to if, start. If you do get that message out, you're going to be canceled. You'll be attacked. You'll be branded a bigot if you are my skin color. Be hard to yeah. brand you a bigot, but I mean. Oh, well, they, if they I, still if do, I, honestly. You know, I, I understand. It. But, but white Americans who want black Americans to prosper, and I really believe that's most Caucasians. They're afraid, Rob. They're afraid. Mm -hmm. The cancel culture has devastated robust debate, honest exchange of ideas, because you're branded immediately. You know it. You see it. Of Anybody course. on television or radio speaks out, you're a bigot. I mean, I don't care what you're saying. They want to destroy you if they being the progressive far left, who's imposing all this woke nonsense and harming children beyond any measure. Last word for you. Well, look, you know what? Uh, I, I always believe in America. I always believe in the opportunity for Americans to thrive and survive. And so I think that honestly, I mean, me, myself, personally, I, I like to call myself uncancelable, but we have to kind of start beating down through this cancel culture. And I really do think, honestly, and, and I've been sort of kind of teased a little bit for being a little bit too optimistic about this, but I really feel like we're seeing uh, we're turning a corner on this cancel culture because now this cancel culture that the left has created is now starting to affect them. And I think that as long as we as conservatives or we as free thinkers, independents, whatever you want to call it, as long as we continue to exchange in this, this open ideas and these open debates, I think that, that we'll, we'll be okay. I hope so, Rob. Um, I share the hope that you have, but I think the fight is even going to get nastier but I think the corner, at least I can see it, but I could be wrong. Rob Smith, author of Always a Soldier. I uh, recommend you guys check that book out. I think you will like it. And Rob, we'll talk again soon, I hope. Thanks for taking the time. Fellow Americans, I am concerned 
about the U.S. dollar. Huge debt, as you know. Will it stay as the world's reserve currency? That's why now more than ever, I recommend you diversify with gold and silver. And the only company I recommend and have for years is American Hartford Gold. I trust them. I've personally done business with them. They sell physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA. And they make it very easy. So call them right now. Make sure you tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. And they will give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. Since I have been recommending American Hartford Gold, gold shot up more than 40%. Silver, more than 60%. So don't wait. Call them now. 866-501-5201. 866-501-5201. Or text Bill to 65532. Again, that's 866-501-5201. Or text Bill to 65532. Bill O'Reilly here. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you subscribe to the First TV YouTube page. Just hit the big red subscribe button below and you'll get clips and highlights of my program, The No Spin News, every single day. We'll see you soon.